Syrup Leaf, Chapter 5, Part 9, The Battle for the Fortress. From the main chamber, I look down the entrance hallway to survey the unfolding battle. Nearly sixty fellow dwarves stand behind me, holding mining picks, rocks, and whatever improvised weapons they're able to produce. Should our champions fall, it is here, in the main chamber, that the rest of us shall make our final stand. As Holistic Detective and Royal W emerge from the corridor into the gatehouse, they are met immediately by three spawn charging towards the corridor to the fortress interior. Kennel emerges behind the other two champions and makes her way to the front gate, where most of the creatures, including the spawn leader, are waiting. Fighting like a dwarf possessed, Kennel quickly fells two of the spawn with hammer strikes to the chest and smashes in the face of a third. The massive spawn leader, its head nearly reaching the ceiling of the great gatehouse, steps over the bodies of its minions to engage Kennel. Holistic Detective strikes down one of the spawn with his hammer. Royal W severs the leg of another and then decapitates the prone creature after it falls over. One more of the creature stands between the two champions and Kennel. Royal W engages it, allowing Holistic Detective to charge forward to support his outnumbered and surrounded comrade his wife, Kennel. As Holistic Detective crosses to the front of the gatehouse, the body of another spawn is sent flying away from Kennel and into a wall. Five of the creatures, including the leader, still surround her. The spawn leader strikes a terrible blow with the flat of its injured claw to Kennel's chest, breaking several ribs. She grunts in pain but remains standing and retaliates with a powerful hammer strike to the spawn leader's leg. Enraged, the spawn leader crushes Kennel's head with its healthy claw before Holistic Detective can arrive to support. Two champions remain. I can now clearly see that seven spawns still remain standing to oppose them. Royal W ducks his opponent's claw attack and counters with an axe blow that severs the creature's head cleanly. At the other end of the gatehouse, Holistic Detective stands to face the spawn leader. The five remaining spawn minions are gathered near the entry gate. I can see now that the minions have all been wounded to varying degrees from earlier in the battle. I do not know whether their wounds are the work of Kennel, Luigi's Discount, Black Loss, Fellblade, or another. The injured spawn slowly shamble towards the remaining champions, but are clearly slowed by their wounds. As the spawn leader lunges to bite at Holistic Detective with its terrifying maw, the champion lands a great blow to the side of its head with his hammer. Such a blow should at least slow the creature, but it does not. The leader smashes Holistic's shield arm with his damaged claw, breaking the bone. The spawn leader lunges forward to bite again, and Holistic strikes it in the face with his hammer, smashing its maw and knocking out several jagged teeth. The spawn leader staggers backwards for the first time in the entire battle, but shakes off the blow and fights on. Meanwhile, Royal W has engaged the five wounded spawn. He severs the leg of one with his axe and cleaves its skull with another axe strike after it falls over. He turns and strikes another of the wounded creatures squarely in the chest, the force of the impact sending its body flying against the gatehouse wall. Holistic Detective swings a mighty hammer strike at the spawn leader, but the huge creature, moving with unnatural speed, somehow avoids the blow. Before the champion can recover from his miss, his opponent's claw snaps around his neck, severing his head. Royal W assesses the situation. Only the spawn leader and two of its minions remain. The champion severs both of the legs of the nearest wounded minion, then decapitates the prone creature. The other remaining minion drags itself across the gatehouse floor with its claws, crawling towards Royal W, both of its legs having been mangled by hammer strikes earlier in the battle. It does not present a threat. Royal W turns to face the spawn leader. The leader lunges at the champion. Royal W deftly steps aside and counters, burying his axe in the creature's left leg. It is a blow that would have easily severed the limb of any lesser enemy but the spawn leader continues to stand. It swings at the dwarf with its injured claw, knocking the shield from Royal W's left hand. As the spawn leader opens its massive right claw to attack the champion's head, Royal W says a quick prayer to Armok and gathers all of his dwarven strength. With both hands, he swings his axe as hard as he can and strikes the creature squarely in the lower body. 
The spawn leader staggers backwards. Unable to put weight on its injured leg, it finally stumbles to the ground. As the creature shakes off the blow and attempts to get to his feet again, it looks up to see Royal W, his axe held high. The dwarven champion smashes the blade of the axe into the prone spawn leader's forehead and does it again and again and several more times for good measure. The spawn leader finally stops moving. Almost as an afterthought, our champion administers a coup de grace to the last of the crippled spawn minions in the gatehouse, then walks over to the spawn leader's body. He proceeds to chop off the ruined head of the massive creature with his axe, as I order the drawbridge to the trade depot lowered. As the front gate opens, the only surviving champion of Syrup Leaf carries the spawn leader's gigantic head with him, out of the front of the gatehouse. Over two dozen spawn are standing outside beneath the trade depot. They all look up and see Royal W standing on the bridge above them, holding his prize aloft with both hands. At the sight of this, the remaining spawn silently turn and slowly walk away from the fortress. Foul Helmet Head wrote, Year 142, The Mountain Home. Already the rumors have reached the capital, though no one was certain how. The tales told of all the merchants dying, but... Dwarves have not been one to let facts get in the way of a good story. At any rate, the royals had not weighed in on the theological implications yet, but already the old statues were being reset up in honor of Saint Nemo, the only dwarf to wound in battle the demon, holistic detective. Statues with a new, additional engraving. Under the adamantian statue there is an engraving. The works dwarfship is of the highest quality. On the engraving, there is an image of Royal W, Avatar of Saint Nemo, Okad Spear Menace, and Holistic Spawn. Royal W is laughing. Okad Spear Menace is bleeding. The Holistic Spawn are making a plaintive gesture. The image commemorates the realization of Royal W as the Avatar of Saint Nemo in the year 142. Scream an Idiot wrote, From the right into a pump operator, scream an idiot, operator of pumps. Entry 67. Fuck, 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 they be inside! Oh, Harmak, I can fucking hear him and they's getting closer. I'm a bump operator, I don't deserve to die like this. Oh, Harmak, I can fucking hear him. Oh, he's getting closer. I'm a pump operator, I don't deserve to die like this. Oh, Harmak, sweet Harmak, please deliver your faithful ones from the claws of those who choose to oppose your shield. Please, oh, Harmak, make him yield. The rest of the entry is smudged beyond recognition with tears, saliva, pump grease, and spilled booze. Screaming Idiot wrote, Technical Analysis posted, Brilliant! We should build a dwarven cannon as a memorial to all the soldiers who died fighting the unholy spawn. How would one go about making a cannon? So, ya wanna build a dwarven cannon. Screaming Idiot's Guide to Cannonry. Step 1. Build a high-pressure pump. Step 2. Load unsuspecting dwarf into the pump. Step 3. Turn on the pump, full blast, and watch him fly! Step 4. Comfort Grieven family, clean chunky dwarfy residue from pump, repeat steps 2 through 4 as necessary. Sirocco wrote, The Journal of Sirocco, 4th entry. Hey, diary! That was some tense stuff! We could hear all sorts of screaming and, 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 and grisly noises coming from the gatehouse, but we stood firm, and I even got to hold a sword! Uh, no, no, it was it was actually my chisel. <laughs> Everyone was really scared because we didn't know if the spawn were going to break through. So I encouraged everyone to have a sing along of the wheels of the wagon go round to keep everyone chipper. But uh, no one joined in, so I just sang it myself for a while. And then Royal W came back, covered in blood and carrying the head of the holistic detective himself. Uh, no, not 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 that holistic detective diary. He died in battle. It's it's very sad. Royal W looked a little dazed by the fight, so I decided to start a rousing chorus of "For he's a jolly good fellow," and no one joined in again. Why won't they sing with me, diary? Huh? They must be jealous of my falsetto. So I sang it by myself while everyone stared at me. Solemn respect. I, I think it was respect. 
Oh well, I've just remembered. I've got some coffins to build. It might have to wait until they find Holistic Detective's head though. No, not that Holistic Detective. The dwarf one. You're such a silly goose sometimes, Diary. I'd better get going. Lots of work to do. Bye, Diary. Hope you don't miss me. Syrup Leaf, Chapter 5, Part 10. Dark Days. 13th of Limestone, 142. I take one final look out the front gate. The broken bodies of both spawn and dwarves lie strewn across the battlefield. The bodies of the dwarves, including those visiting from the mountain homes, will be given a proper burial in the fortress. The bodies of the spawn will be fodder for Manuel Calavera's craft works. Wordlessly, Royal W and I walk back into the main chamber. The sixty dwarves gathered in the main chamber, having witnessed the greatest and most terrible battle of our time, look on at Royal W in almost reverent silence. There is no celebration of the victory. The fortress is as quiet as a tomb. The silence is broken by a shriek coming from the western halls. I jump with a start. Royal W instinctively grabs the handle of his axe. The sound of rapid, heavy footsteps echoes from the western hallway, followed by another shriek. Dwarves look at each other nervously. The shrieking voice erupts into cackling laughter. I've done it! <laughs> it's complete! Onan Birir Amnek. Soothed shimmered, the diversion of tribute. This is a dog leather low boot. All Craft's dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with dolomite, decorated with dog leather and donkey leather, and encircled with bands of dog leather, dolomite, and limonite. This object menaces with spikes of dolomite, copper, and amazonite. On the item is an image of dwarves in cave spider silk. The dwarves are traveling. The artwork relates to the founding of Syrup Leaf by the romantic glaze of the Gate of Climaxes in the early spring of 138. Mystical Haberdasher gleefully emerges from the western hallway, holding aloft a gleaming polished black leather boot, studded with gems and perfectly rounded small stones, the back seam subtly stitched with the finest cave spider silk. His wide grin fades as he feels the icy stares of sixty dwarves upon him. What's wrong? Why is everyone so quiet? Mayor Bob III decrees that the soldiers who gave their lives to protect Syrup Leaf shall be remembered forevermore among the greatest of dwarven heroes. I immediately begin preparations for the funeral to be held the following day with highest dwarven honors. Box Nihili, Gold Jaws, Draconal, and Green Intern are put to work in the forges to create coffins of solid gold for our fallen heroes. The deadly hume mines out a new chamber in the catacombs below the fortress, which will be the final resting place of the heroes. The white crane follows behind, diligently smoothing and polishing the walls and floors of the new crypt. Laboring the entire night without rest, Hella Turtle engraves the hero's crypt with scenes from the battle, a battle which the dwarves of Syrup Leaf have begun referring to in hushed tones as the barbarous onslaught. Engraved on the wall is an image of an exceptionally designed image of the spawn of Holistic and Luigi's Discount Portal Throats, influential suitor, the Dwarf, by Hella Turtle, Athelgirith. Luigi's Discount Portal Throats, the influential suitor, is striking down. The artwork relates to the killing of the spawn of Holistic by the Dwarf Luigi's Discount Portal Throats, the influential suitor, in Syrup Leaf, in the early autumn of 142, during Wreath Regenkesh, the Barbarous Onslaught. Engraved on the floor is an exceptionally designed image of Bath Ware Echoes, the spawn of Holistic, and Kennel Bentrings, the dwarf by Hella Turtle. Kennel is striking down Vath Ware Echoes. The artwork relates to the killing of the spawn of Holistic Vath Ware Echoes by the dwarf Kennel in the early autumn of 142 during the Barbarous Onslaught. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of Council Stolen, the spawn of Holistic, and Royal W. Passwheel. The Gully of Groves, the Dwarf, by Hella Turtle, Athelgirish. Royal W. Passwheel, the Gully of Groves, is striking down Council Stolen. The artwork relates to the killing of the spawn of Holistic Council Stolen. Engraved on the wall is a superiorly designed image of Fellblade, Pulley Urges, the Dwarf, and Elder Wraiths, the spawn of Holistic, by Hella Turtle, Athelgirish. Elder Wraiths is striking down Fellblade. The artwork relates to the killing of the dwarf Fellblade by the spawn of Holistic Elder Wraiths in the Barbarous Onslaught. 
Engraved on the wall is a superiorly designed image of Lacklos Workfathers, the dwarf, and Felwindy, the spawn of Holistic by Heliturtle Athelgareth. Felwindy is striking down Lacklos Workfathers. The artwork relates to the killing of the dwarf Lacklos by the spawn of Holistic Felwindy in the Barbarous Onslaught. I have difficulty falling asleep on this night, as my mind continuously replays the scenes from the battle. When I finally do fall asleep, dreams give way to nightmares of the battle, followed by a nightmare of the demonic visage of Holistic Detective watching me in amusement. I can hear its voice in my head. Now do you believe that I am real? The heroes Fellblade, Lackloss, and Luigi's Discount are laid to rest in their golden coffins at one end of the chamber. At the other end, a double sarcophagus holds the remains of the other two champions, the wife and husband, Kennel, and Holistic Detective. It is ironic, in a way, that one of our beloved dwarven heroes to fall in battle shares a name with the most unspeakable of demons. Supposedly, the demon itself was once a legendary dwarven warrior before falling to darkness, and it was this legendary warrior of truth and courage before her fall for whom the hero of Syrupleaf was named. The child, Deki, breaks into hysterical sobs during the eulogy for his mother, Luigi's Discount. I wish there was something I could say to comfort him. As night comes, so again do the nightmares. The face of holistic detective haunts my dreams in silence. Our military is decimated from the recent battle. The young wrestlers Syntax, Spermy Smurf, Swatchester, and Firos are improving each day, but are still far from being able to take on the sort of nightmarish creatures we have seen at this fortress. Even if they were all to become champions, it's still not enough. We need more soldiers. I put a call out for volunteers, which is answered by Sirocco, Tassid, Alias, and Draconel. This is still not enough. I draft the glassmaker Mailman and the pump operators Pumping Lemma and Screaming Idiot into the military, as our fortress has to this point had little need for their former professions. Screaming Idiot in particular is almost rabidly adverse to his new role, constantly grumbling and pouting and sometimes nearly boiling over with rage. I think that he will make a fine soldier, if he can learn to channel his passion. I order the champion Royal W to begin intense training of the new recruits, who are all outfitted with full plate mail. In keeping with Dwarven tradition, they will be trained as wrestlers first, and will be given their weapon when Royal W deems them ready. As the military now spends nearly all of its time training, we no longer have the resources to continue patrolling the area outside of the fortress. The best I can do is station Captain of the Guard, 64-bit robot, and his lieutenant, Flocks of Mice, at the front gate. There were more nightmares that night. The demon's face, ever silent, 7th of Sandstone, 142. The nightmares have still not abated. The face of the demon holistic detective continues to haunt me. I awaken from another nightmare, and decide to take a walk to calm my nerves. The fortress is eerily quiet, as most of the dwarves are asleep. I make my way towards the gatehouse, hoping to perhaps chat with one of the guards on duty to get my mind off things. As I make my way to the golden entrance hallway, I stop for a moment, squinting. I could swear I see the ghosts of the dwarven caravan merchants. I turn around and walk back to bed. 2nd of Timber, 142. The days have begun to grow very dark. I could swear upon Armak that it seems each day has less than two hours of daylight now. Many of our dwarves are cave adapted and are perfectly fine with this, but I still find it unsettling. Over a mug of ale, I ask Vox Nihili if he thinks it's possible that the site of our fortress has been cursed with darkness since the day of the battle. He chuckles and says that the short daylight hours are because of the fortress's remote location and the fact that winter is approaching. 30th of Timber, 142. I suppose it was inevitable that the mountain homes would notice that their caravan never returned. I'm sure that they can only speculate as to the fate of those who traveled here and I can certainly not fault any dwarf that would not wish to follow in their footsteps. Still, I had hoped that at least a few foolish souls would have made their way here by now. As I drift off to sleep, again I see the face of the demon, holistic detective, before me, and then, for the first time since that first night, it speaks. Or at least, I can hear its voice in my head. I'm coming for you, Jasmus. I'm coming for syrup leaf. 
I can feel the demon reading my thoughts. And then, in a way that is hard to describe, I somehow feel in my mind the horrible sound of the demon chuckling. <laughs> no, Jasonus, you are a fool. Royal W did not kill me, I am a demigod. Neither dwarf nor man can kill me. Royal W killed one of my lieutenants. Suffice to say I was duly impressed by the fight your pitiful fortress was able to muster, but it will not be enough to save you. I am coming. The sun never does rise the next morning. Bob and Threadbare wrote, What happened next I will not bother to relate. Better hands than I have recorded that battle, and the fate of those who fought the enemy. But from the perspective of the non-combatants hiding behind the champions, we were first relieved to know that they can bleed and die, and that the greatest of their number could fall, though at the cost of far too many lives. And when Royal W brought the spawn's head for all to see, a great cheer went up among the dwarves. We would never hide behind bridges or walls again. After the battle, we found ourselves with the question of what to do with the bodies of the fallen. Our own brave soldiers would be encased in the strongest and greatest of tombs, of course. But the cadavers of the creatures who fought us had to be dealt with as well. Oh, that we had simply burned them all when we had the chance. They may be terrible, disturbing mockeries of dwarven kind, but they conceal nothing. Their very existence is an aberration, yet they make no effort to hide this fact. The same cannot be said for others. I believe the changes began when the Overseer, one Jasimus Prime, fell sick and resigned from his position. Most dwarves thought that he had to step down simply out of a sense of guilt. More dwarves had died under his watch than any previous, and being responsible for opening the gate may have weighed heavily upon his soul. I began to suspect something more, however, when I came across his sleeping form laid out upon his desk in the middle of the day. Mr. Prime had been having difficulties with sleeping, difficulties which even our usual ration of alcohol could do nothing to prevent. While even this could be accounted for in a guilty conscience, as I stood there over his unconscious form, a sense of terror gripped at my heart. For Mr. Prime, though showing no other signs of wakefulness, was uttering sounds no dwarven mouth was meant to utter. I can only write a rough translation of how these words seemed to be said. Ya, ya, holistic mindrigif, uznab, olurknen, quillingen, holistic quillingen. A quiet inquiry I engaged in later showed that no other had heard him say such words and Mr. Prime himself seemed to be growing ever less aware of his own surroundings. From the log of 64-bit Robot, Captain of the Guard. Well, the battle is over. We won, I guess. Shame to lose so many of our best in the attack. <laughs> I'm being stationed at the gate. Fat lot of good that'll do. I broke my leg training. I'm useless. I have no fighting skill. Best I can do is look good and give people a sense of security, however little and empty it is. Still, can't complain too much. Got to enjoy that onyx door all day. Probably the best thing this fortress will put out. I put in a request with our overseer to get me making weapons, though I, I guess it'll be a while before it happens. Just a bit. Just so I can say I'm not useless. Oh well, at least they're alive. Hopefully I'll stay that way. Time to stare out into the darkness again. Just because I live in a nightmare doesn't mean I have to be afraid. But I still am. Scream an idiot wrote, from the writings of Scream an idiot, pump operator, stupid sorbet, meat shield wrestler. Entry 1678, death stalks us. The military was nearly destroyed in the last attack. The spawn of holistic armor, damn her bloody name, reaped a giant harvest of woe and suffering and pain and blood and the like before they were taken down. I... "'Twas a battle that'll be told and retold for generations, but unlike most battles, it won't be told by laughing friends over good ale and a hot meal of dwarven syrup roast and broiled pump helmet. Nay, it'll be spoken of in harsh whispers, in the cold and the dark. It to be a cautionary type tale, something too horrible to tell the little ones. To mention the spawn is to invite darkness and dread into your art and into your hearth. I heard the overseer, bleeding idiot that he may be, mumbling about the lack of sun. 
Some of the fancy book learned types told us that the sun refuses to show its face because of the common winter. And while I'm no poofty, sky loving worshipper of the rainbow bat god what loves children, even I understand that the sun is, well, almost holy. Its light drives evil from the heart and mind. There's plenty of evil here these days, and fear. The darkness, once comforting like my mum's blanket, only reminds me of the crawl and pained abominations what even now plot to torment us. Sleeping's real hard these days. Armag help me, I need to keep a candle lit with me at all times, but it don't help. I keep seeing things in the shadows. Ghosts, maybe. Jasimus thinks so, and I ain't disinclined to believe him. Part of me, the part what be dwarfy, is nearly pleased with the prospect of fighting. I'll learn to fight and protect myself from what threatens me and me fellows, but the rest of me. Scarred shitless. I'm a pump operator. The best to ever come from the mountain gnomes. I ain't no fighter. Oh, Armak, I need a drink. Skullbuggy wrote. Entry, 13th of Lime, the fifth year. We beat back the siege. The spawn of holistics fell under the hammer of our bravest warriors. And we have emerged victorious. I don't feel well, though. It's a victory, I know, but something isn't right. Something's digging at my very soul. Entry, 15th of Lime, the fifth year. My nights have been sleepless. As of now, it's past midnight and the sun still has not risen in the sky. I sit at my desk, scribbling and scratching words into my journal, most of them meaningless. Sand Raiders, holistic spawn. Syrup Leaf, it seems, is doomed to fail, and I sit here up in the early hours of the morning, doing nothing about it. I feel... useless. I see apocalyptic visions in my nightmarish daydreams while I try to nod off to sleep those... things. They keep appearing. The spawn. Those horrible, demonic things. They plodded towards the commune, teeth clicking and clacking, a deep burble coming from their bellies and a horrible grumbling in their throats. Their two eyes were locked, piercing, cold gazes, the tallest one. It roared. Its horrible screaming is still ringing in my ears, and I cannot get it out, no matter how. Jasimus, too, has been unwell recently. I noticed him walking the halls, eyes wide open. His gaze went on for miles. I didn't know why, but I hope he'll be well soon. He is overseeing this colony, after all. I feel sick. I need to lie down. Perhaps I can fall asleep this time. It's the seventeenth of Lime? The fifth year. Everybody's dead. Everybody's going to die. It's my fault. It's, it's my fault. Entry, twenty-second of Lime, the fifth year. I've finally gotten sleep. For three days I've been in bed completely unconscious. I woke up to see the dwarves working, as usual. Did they even notice I was out? Entry, Ninth of Sand, the fifth year. Jasimus has been walking up and down the Golden Hall, looking for ghosts. At least, that's what he's saying he's looking for. He really needs to get some sleep in him. That or booze. Entry, Twenty-Sixth of Sand, the fifth year. So thirsty. Screaming idiot is hogging the kegs, though. Says he needs it to get through the day, ya sod. His new position must be really getting to him.